Life tries to get you down. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mercedes. And I'm Adam. And we're from Ms. Cresswell's third block class. Our assignment for Black History Month was to research people who made history. And we had to do a PowerPoint about those people that we researched about Black History Month. In February being Black History Month, Ms. Cresswell's second block Weighted Honors English class prepared a research project on famous people in black history. We had to research our figures. We also made a PowerPoint compiling the information that we found. We had to write a speech told from the first person point of view. We had to literally become our famous black people. This included, this included acting and behaving like our figure. We had a variety of figures ranging from politicians to rappers. Let's go to the library. Let the tears fall down my grave. Let us sing. If it evens all your pain, let her go. And walk right out on me. And if the sun comes up tomorrow, let her be. Oh. Um, I'm Darius Rucker. Um, I'm probably one of the biggest black musicians out there outside of rap and R&B. <laughs> um, I started out, I've always wanted to be a singer since I was a little kid in Charleston. But, uh, you know, I started out R&B, country, everything else is always what I always wanted to do. Went to the University of South Carolina. This guy, Mark Bryan, heard me singing in the shower. He liked my voice. We started a band, you know. But uh, we started as the Wolf Brothers. Some other people started coming in. And we became Hootie and the Blowfish, who you probably know. From uh, B101's been playing us a lot. I don't know why. <laughs> I've heard way too much of us by now. I'm almost sick of myself. <laughs> but, um, you know. Start with Hootie and the Blowfish. I did a solo R&B album that kind of faded into the distance that nobody else knows about. But uh, I released an album recently, 2008. It was uh, Learn to Live. It was a country album. I always wanted to do it. It was Capitol Records. And uh, if you ever heard Don't Think I Don't Think About It or, um, you know, History in the Making, that's some of the stuff off that album. You know, you've never guessed that it was a, a black country singer. Everybody's like, oh, that's an old white folk, you know? But <laughs> I, I sit there and I wonder sometimes, why are we still thinking about that? I never really thought about race. Our band never thought about race. <laughs> Heck, it was an all white band. I was the only black guy. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, you know, what's this about? I'm, who cares? I didn't think about it. <laughs> everybody's like, oh, he's the first black country singer since Charlie Pride, you know? It's been 20 years. Who cares? <laughs> I... I so it's music. It's all about the music. It's never been about race for me. I don't like the only love quote I follow is that you really don't know what love is until you have a child and you go through the unconditionally mother love, motherly love for your kid. And I just love like my favorite thing to do is eat Doritos and watch TV, just to lounge around. I have to stay fit and keep my figure because I have the first case of diabetes. So that's why it was one of my fears to have a kid. My fears were to have a kid and to have an ugly baby and death. And I had to basically like, I was like basically going through like a nurse reaction because I was having like in the bed having a kid and I didn't want like any health problems to go wrong. So I basically had fun with my lifetime. I started my life, my famous life when I was 17 years old and that was during the Miss USA pageant. And I continue to follow my life and to be famous. And I have a song created about me. It's called She's Fine by Hurricane Chris. I really don't have no problem with the song. It's not disrespecting me at all. I actually danced to it once and it's on YouTube, I think. And that's basically it. Am I on? Hi, I'm Karen Elaine Johnson, but most people know me as Whoopi Goldberg. I was born November 13th, 1955. Although, in some places you may see it say like 1950 or 1949, but my, bro my mom tried to raise my brother and me in like Manhattan as a single mother because my father left us, so I, had, I felt like I had to help support and pay the bills. So I got a job at a really young age after I dropped out of high school, so I had to lie about my age a little bit to get some good jobs. Um, I'm currently working on The View with Sherry Shepard, Elizabeth Hasselbeck, Barbara Walters, and some other people. Um, 
I, I really like working on The View because it lets me speak my mind, and that's how I got the nickname Whoopi. Be like a Whoopi cushion. If you're gassed, you just let it out. So if a thought pops into my head, I let it out. My, uh, my daughter Alexandria in 2007 got engaged to songwriter and producer Stevie J. She had my first granddaughter when I was 34, on my 34th birthday actually. Uh, I was in several movies, Ghost, The Lion King, uh, played different roles. I was, a, I was a psychic, I also played Death, God, like capital G God. Um, I was a talking hyena. And I played an old white guy in a movie, The Associate. Um, one of my most famous and noted roles is Cecile in The Color Purple. Um, yeah, I guess that's Generally known as Marguerite Ann Johnson until I changed my name. I was born April 4th, 1928 in St. Louis, Missouri, and I spent my childhood between there and my grandmother's house in Stamps, Arkansas. Um, when I was eight years old, my mother's boyfriend raped me, and I told my brother, and him and my uncles killed him, and I spent five years mute after that because I felt that my voice is what killed him, and I didn't want to be responsible for anyone else dying. When I was around 13 or 14, my grandmother's friend, Mrs. Flowers, convinced me that I should start talking, and she introduced me to a lot of great writers, which is what influenced me to become a poet. Um, in 1954, I studied African and modern dance, and a couple years after that, I went around Europe touring with a production of Porgy and Bess. Um, in 1960, I moved to Cairo, Egypt, to work with a newspaper, and a year later, I moved to Ghana, Africa, to work with another newspaper. And then I moved back to the United States in 1964, to work with Malcolm X on one of his civil rights projects and he was assassinated so then I worked with Martin Luther King Jr. but then he was assassinated and he was assassinated on my birthday so um, one of our close friends said that I should start writing so that I wouldn't grieve as much and um, that's when I started writing my first autobiography I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings and that's also my most famous of my autobiographies. I have five other autobiographies aside from that one and I also have a lot of books on poetry. I read one of my poems at Bill Clinton's inauguration. Um, ben Harper has a song that is pretty much dedicated to one of my poems because he uses actual words from the poem in his song. Um, I can't think of it. How you doing? I'm Ray Charles. I was born on September 23rd, 1930, and uh, when I was five, I actually saw my brother get killed. I don't know if anybody has any brothers in here, but uh, he was killed, and actually haunt my uh, dreams and my thoughts forever. And then I actually saw um, this guy playing piano in a cafe, which uh, enhanced my. Uh, uh, he was like, "Hey, you want to learn piano?" I was like, "All right, I'll learn piano." So. I started playing piano, and that's actually where my career started, just in that little small cafe playing piano. And um, so one day, one day when I was five, I got soapy water in my eyes, and um, the soap actually made my eyes start going bad. And um, when I was seven, I started, I was actually officially blind. And uh, when I was a teenager, I went to um, you know, school for the blind, you know, because I can't go to a regular school because I'm blind. I'll be there running into people and stuff. And um, I started like studying music and learning music and you know all that fun stuff and I enhanced my music career and then um, when I was out of, out of school I went to Florida which uh, I uh, you know started going into bands and stuff I started playing piano for different bands and um, people like were like oh we don't want him because he's black but then I, I showed him what I could do and they were like holy crap we want you you're amazing and I was like all right yeah whatever but um, there's also a downside to being in bands, too, because I started doing drugs, which is really bad. And don't do drugs. Just nobody do drugs. It's bad for you. And um, people used to cheat me out of my money when I got paid for the gigs that I did. They used to uh, give me ones and say that they're $20 bills. And I was like, no, no, this is not cool. So I would always demand that I would get paid in ones so I could actually count how much money I had. I could feel it. And um, later... When I was done, the whole band and other people's band deal, 
I want to make my own band and uh, just make my own songs and stuff. And I, I got a record deal at ABC Studios, which I recorded George on my mind and Hit the Road Jack. Ever hear Hit the Road Jack? You know, Hit the Road Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Yeah, dude, that song is song's awesome. And um, after I hit a, a couple of hits and everything, I went to uh, Georgia to play a gig. And um, in that gig, uh, it was segregated. The club was segregated. So when I got off the bus, I saw all these black people picketing. I was like, yo, what's up with this? And they were like, Ray, why are you playing at a club that's segregated? I mean, it's not right. So I thought about it a little bit. And I was like, all right, fine, I'm not going to play. So I got my band on the bus, and I got out of there. And I was, um, I was kicked out of Georgia, my home state for that. I was kicked out of Georgia. And later in the 70s, I got, I got back into Georgia. They were, the government was like, hey, Ray, you, that was wrong that we should do this. And, uh, you know, you're getting back into Georgia. And um, my, my song, Georgia on My Mind, was actually, like, titled The State Song in Georgia. That's a little bit about me. How you doing? I'm Ray Charles. I was born on September 23rd, 1930, and uh, when I was five, I actually saw my brother get killed. I don't know if anybody has any brothers out here, but uh, he was killed, and actually haunt my uh, dreams and my thoughts forever. And then I actually saw um, this guy playing piano in a cafe, which uh, enhanced my, uh, uh, he was like, hey, you want to learn piano? I was like, all right, I'll learn piano. So I started playing piano, and that's actually where my career started, just in that little small cafe playing piano. And um. So one day, one day when I was five, I got soapy water in my eyes, and um, the soap actually made my eyes started going bad. And um, when I was seven, I started I was actually officially blind. And uh, when I was a teenager, I went to um, you know school for the blind, you know, because I can't go to a regular school because I'm blind. I'll be there running into people and stuff. And um, I, I started like studying music and learning music and you know all that fun stuff, and I, and I enhanced my music career. And then um, when I was out of, out of school, I went to Florida, which uh, I uh, you know, started going into bands and stuff. I started playing piano for different bands. And um, people like, were like, oh, we don't want him because he's black. But then I, I showed them what I could do, and they were like, holy crap, we want you. You're amazing. And I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. But um, there's also a downside to being in bands, too, because I started doing drugs, which is really bad. And don't do drugs. Just nobody do drugs. It's bad for you. And um, people used to cheat me out of my money when I got paid for the gigs that I did. They used to uh, give me ones and say that they're twenty dollar bills, and I was like, no, no, this is not cool. So I would always demand that I would get paid in ones, so I could actually count how much money I had. I could feel it. And um, later, when I was done the whole band and other people's band deal, I wanted to make my own band and. Uh, just make my own songs and stuff. And I, I got a record deal at ABC Studios, which I recorded George on my mind and Hit the Road Jack. Ever hear Hit the Road Jack? You know, Hit the Road Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Yeah, dude, that song is song's awesome. And um, after I hit a, a couple of hits and everything, I went to uh, Georgia to play a gig. And um, in that gig, uh, it was segregated. The club was segregated. So when I got off the bus, I saw all these black people picketing. I was like, yo, what's up with this? And they were like, Ray, why are you playing at a club that's segregated? I mean, it's not right. So I thought about it a little bit, and I was like, all right, fine, I'm not going to play. So I got my band on the bus, and I got out of there. And I was, um, I was kicked out of Georgia, my home state for that. I was kicked out of Georgia. And later in the 70s, I got, I got back into Georgia. They were, the government was like, hey, Ray, you, that was wrong that we should do this. And, uh... You know, you're getting back into Georgia. And um, my, st my song, Georgia on My Mind, was actually, like, titled The State Song in Georgia. That's a little bit about me. I'm Janet Jackson. And I'm Michael Jackson. And you want... Huh? Oh, okay. So, I was born May 16th, 1966. And I was born August 29th, 1958 into a poor family. Um, Michael, he rose to fame early, but I, uh, he loved being on stage at first. He was the one who, um, who started everything, and so I was forced to go into the business, even though I wanted to be a racehorse jockey. Um, I really never had a childhood. Um, when at my recording studio, I, there was a playground across, and I always looked at it, and I always cried because I never had a childhood because I was always on tour TV show interview 
or I was recording another album? Um, I always felt that I had a pretty normal life for being part of the Jackson family. Um, I've been able to be married twice without um, anybody really publicizing everything. Um, both of those marriages ended pretty early. Um, and I just broke up with my boyfriend of six years, Jermaine Dupree. So all in all, I think I've been successful, maybe um, compared to my brother more times than not. But um, I think I've lived a pretty normal life for being part of this really famous family. For my Thriller album, I didn't need any promotional advertising. As advertising. And for the album, I had four top singles, hits in a row. And in the Guinness World of Records, at the time, my video for Thriller was the longest music video ever recorded. Um, so, yeah, we are very close. And um, I... I did a tribute to him on the VMAs um, and where we danced together because we, we did a collaboration scream for his album history. Um, I miss my brother a lot, but I know that one day I'll see him again and it'll be really great. Um, and I'm just taking uh, pride in being able to help raise his kids and being able to be in their lives as much as possible. On June 25th, 2009, I went into cardiac arrest from overdose of drugs that my doctor prescribed to me and I died later on in that afternoon and I am currently buried in a cemetery where all famous celebrities are found. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tyra Lynn Banks. My birthday is December 4th, 1973. Um, I am influential for, Afri uh, for Black History Month because I was the first African-American woman to pose on a Sports Illustrated magazine alone. Um, I have my own show, which is a Tyra show, and I'm also a producer of America's Next Top Model. Um, I have my own organization called the T-Zone, which helps young women find themselves and help them have self-confidence confidence which is like you know teenage ages and feel good about themselves um, I also wrote my own book called Tyra's Beauty um, uh, before high school I didn't have confidence in myself but when I graduated my mom she began taking photos of me and I began shopping it around you know to different modeling agencies and before I went to college before I even started my freshman year um, I was spotted by a modeling scout and they invited me to Paris so I was as I went to Paris I began my modeling career and it was really hard. It was extremely hard, but within one week I got over 26 bookings, which was a great thing. And I was on a roll. Um, when I started my Amer uh, the Tyra show, um, my name is Muhammad Ali, but I was born Cassius Clay. I was born January 17th, 1942, in Louisville, Kentucky, to humble parents. I got into boxing because my bike was stolen when I was in junior high and I wanted revenge on the thief. I went to a cop with this proposition and he became my boxing coach. I won my first amateur bout in 1954 and shortly after competed in the 1960 Rome Olympic Games. I won the gold medal there and shortly after I became a professional boxer. I won the heavyweight championship against Sonny Liston and shortly after gained national recognition for defeating Ernie Terrell in a 15 round fight. In 1967 I got arrested for draft evasion after converting to black Muslim. I was sentenced to five years and a $10,000 fine. The Supreme Court overruled it and I was back on track to become a professional boxer. I lost my comeback fight to Joe Frazier, but shortly after defeated George Foreman in the 1974 Rumble in the Jungle. I defended the title several times before losing it to Leon Spinks. I won my number one contender shot and, and regained the title back from him later. I retired with a professional career with a professional record of 56 wins and five losses, zero draws. I have a legacy with a film starring Will Smith, and I'm the cover boy of Fight Night Round 4. I'm still alive, but I have severe brain damage and Parkinson's disease. Okay, I'm doing Tyra Lynn Banks. I did her because she's the first black supermodel to be on Sports Illustrated, and because she's a good role model, because she has a show, she has a show for T-Zones, and it really it helps little teenagers and stuff. That's what I'm doing, Tyra Banks. Fine, because I love all her songs. Most of her songs got to do with poverty and romance and uh, that children got molested. 
Um, she was born in the Bronx. She was molested when she was four by her dad. She left when she was five went to live with her uncle. When she was 13, she came back to live with her mom. And she never graduated in 11th grade. So basically she's trying to make a difference for our children to graduate, to be better in life. And she's helping poverty like Haiti. And I love all her songs. All right. Malcolm X was born on May 19th. 1925 and died on February 21st, 1965, and he was, his birthplace was University of University Hospital in Nebraska, and he died at the Audubon Ballroom in New York. His burial place was Burcliff Cemetery in Hartsdale, New York. His mom's name, his mom and dad is Louise and Earl Little, and he has a lot of siblings. And his siblings are Ella, Earl, Mary, Wilf Wilfred, Hilda, and Philbert, and Giovanni, and Brigaldi. His dad died when he was six, and his mom got put into a mental hospital when he was 12. His brothers and sisters were split up and put into different foster homes. He was a minister all over the um, nation of Islam, and he was a very big spokesperson. And he did everything like Martin Luther King did, only he fought with actions and not words. And yeah. oh, and he got he got shot 15 times in the chest. That's how he died. I I did Maya Angelou. She was she was born on April 4th, 1928. She contributed the Black History Month. <laughs> Black history by helping Dr. Martin Luther King, like making organizations for the civil rights movement, and she also helped Malcolm X with the organization of African American unity. She has given charities to many <laughs> uh, public and educational reasons. She's wrote, and she was a great female dancer. She did calypso, African dance. She did modern dance and ballet. She also uh, she also wrote poems, TV shows, short stories, newspaper articles, and much much more. Recently, and time and time again, Maya was abandoned by her family a whole lot. Her her mother's uh, boyfriend raped her when she was a child. She was she was very smart too. She was by the time she was 16, she was in a college. She was also the first female sh black street conductor in the entire city so she was like she was very famous for her writing she has more than 29 awards and including three grammys the lincoln medal in 2000 and much much more so ron james he was the um only african-american on um a cover of vogue magazine a women's magazine his mom faced personal problems like she was addicted to drugs and all that so she gave it to his grandma and he was he was in and out of foster care like every other day, so he didn't have like a, a child for life, cause a playful life and all that. And when he came to the league, he was the only player to um go to the only rookie to go to a um an All Star game, his first All Star game as a rookie coming to the NBA. And he was from Cleveland, Ohio, born on December twentieth, December twenty eighth. Uh, 1980, I think 89 or something. I think. And his idol was Michael Jordan. It taught him a lot. Taught him he so he watched him. He was little. You know that. And Jackie Robinson was born in 1919 in Georgia. He died 1974 in Connecticut. He was the first African American to play baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, also, he was. Um, he also uh, went to UCLA College, and um, he w he won four varsity letters in track, football, baseball, and basketball. And um, when he was, um, you know, when he was uh, when he retired, him and his son were major supporters for Martin Luther King Jr. And he accompanied him on the march to Washington. I think he's important to Black History Month because you know he was the first African American to play baseball, and. Um, he gives other African Americans the courage to play baseball and do their and you know fulfill their dreams. So that's why I think Jack Robinson is a major influence on African Americans. Well, my person, her name was Dorothy Dandridge. She was a singer and also an actress. 
and she was forced into show business by her mother, Rudy Dandruff, who was also an actress. And Rudy Dandruff forced her daughters into a singing group, and they called themselves the Dandruff Trio. The Dandruff Trio started themselves in small nightclubs in New York, and afterwards they eventually broke up. Dandruff wanted to continue on singing, so she dropped out of school to become a solo artist. In the same nightclubs that her and her sister went into, she went into by herself. So, she got her career started and she was seen in a small number of films. And after she got her career started, she got married. She got married to a man who really wasn't interested in her. She got married to a man who wanted her money and wanted him to do, wanted her to do everything that she wanted, that he wanted her to do. So she wasn't really willing to do all of that, so she was getting beaten on. And she was being beat on, and they eventually got divorced. After the divorce, Dandruff got really depressed, and her doctor prescribed her with antidepressant medicine, and she was also drinking at the same time. So, after that, she eventually overdosed on the medicine and the alcohol. And her importance to black history was that she was the first black African-American woman to perform in a lot of um, big theaters in New York City, and she achieved a lot of achievements that she wanted to achieve in her life. I chose my monument for Dirty Dangerous because she was the type of person to have everybody. She was the type of person to have everybody wanting to have everybody else to be happy besides herself. So I chose her a picture of her so everybody could see her. And I put her monument inside of her school in Cleveland, Ohio, because she wasn't attending the job out of school. She wanted to become a solo artist, but she didn't want to drop out of school, and she was forced. So she dropped out of school, and that's why I put her monument inside of her school, so everybody can see who she was. Your teacher was right. You need.